Hi friends, welcome to Avi's Academy. In this video, I'll be demonstrating and I'll be explaining how to draw an arrow diagram, which is an integral part of uh, project evaluation and project scheduling technique uh, that comes under operations research. So without further ado, uh, let us see our question, which is on the green board. In the question they have given, the dependency relationship between the activities of a project are shown below. So here they have provided different activities and they have asked us to draw the arrow diagram and AON diagram which is activity on node diagram. So how to draw AON diagram that I'll be discussing in the next video. In this video the focus will be on arrow diagram. So let's see the activities that are given. There are uh, six activities that are named as A, B, C, D and E, A, B, C, D, E and F. Then they have given immediate uh, predecessors. Pre uh, predecessors are the activities that, uh, that they are preceding activities. Considering this, we have to draw arrow diagram. In drawing arrow diagram, we have to give due consideration to three aspects. First of all, we have to identify the starting activities. The starting activities are those activities which do not have any immediate predecessor, means which do not have any preceding activities. So if you see the question, uh, the activity A, B and C, they do not have any preceding activity, it, they do not have any predecessor. So since they do not have any predecessor, these activities becomes the starting activity in our uh, arrow diagram. And next consideration that we need to give is the ending activity. Ending activities are those activities which do not have succeeding activity. Or you can say ending activities are those activities which do not act like a predecessor of any activity. So as we continue forward in the question, if you see activity D, E and F, D, E and F are not immediate predecessors of any activity. That means they are the ending activity. So A, B and C are our starting activities, D, E and F our ending activity. And third important consideration that has to be given to joint activities. So joint activities how you can identify. If you see activity D, they have to start, the activity D has to start only after activity A and B are completed. That means activity A and B are, should join together before the commencement of activity D. So these are joint activity and again we have in here in the case of F activity. So before we start the activity F, activity B and C must be completed. So B and C are again a joint activity. So considering these three aspects, we can move forward in uh, drawing an arrow diagram. So let us do that. First, we have to identify the starting activity that we have already done. A, B, C are our starting activities. So let me start here. So this is the uh, starting event. So from this event, our three activities should start. But here, if you see, A and B has to be a joint activity. That means it has to join on the same event. But there is a rule in drawing a project uh, diagram, nothing but arrow diagram or AO and diagram. That is, no two activities can have same head event and tail event. That means, for example, this is our next event. So if I connect A here, so now for A, activity A, this is the tail event and this is the head event. So this is head event and this is tail event. So if you are drawing another activity, then the same act, next activity cannot join on the next node because for that activity, if this is naming as activity B, their tail, its tail activity and head activity is matching with activity A. So this cannot be done in the case of arrow diagram. So that's why we have to, we should have a different events for these activities. So by considering this, let me draw uh, the first, uh, the starting events of this uh, arrow diagram. So this is our first event. So it will have three starting activities. So this will be on a different node. So this is our three starting activities, A, B, and then activity C. So I'll write the activity name on the arrow diagram on the arrows which are connecting the two events. So this is our activity A, 
this is our activity b you have to draw the arrow remember and then this is our activity c so these are our starting activity now next to draw activity d activity a and b should be completed but if you see here activity a and b are at different events though there is no connection between the events so since we cannot start activity d before the before uh, uh, completing activity b and a so there should be a link between these two activities for that reason we will draw a dummy so that we can start activity d so i'll draw a dummy from b to see so dummy activity has to be draw using a dotted line so this is my first dummy activity so this is called as project dummy or uh, logical dummy because these are establishing some connection which is necessary to draw the diagram so now activity a and b are ending at the same event from this event i can start activity d okay now i discussed earlier activity d e and f are the ending activity that means these three activities should end on same event so therefore if this is our ending event if i am indicating this as a ending event then activity a activity d should start after a and b so now there is a connection here i'll draw activity d so this is our activity d next is activity e activity e can be started only after the completion of activity b so activity b is completed here so i can start activity e from this uh, node so what i'll do is i'll since again d e f are ending activity so this has to end on the same event nothing but same node so i'll be drawing activity e from here to here so this is my activity e and then so activity f which is our last activity so it has to start only after the completion of b and c so b is here it is completing in, uh, in this uh, node and c is completing in this node so there is no connection again i have to draw a dummy so i'll be drawing a dummy again so which will be our second dummy so dummy 2 so now both these activities b and c are uh, ending at here so from this node i can start another activity which is f so since f is also an ending activity so it will end on the same node here so this is my activity f so in this way we have to draw arrow diagram so in drawing that as i said remember three aspects one is the starting activities which do not have immediate uh, predecessors and then the ending activities which do not act like predecessors so if you see in the immediate predecessor uh, row uh, df is not appearing that means they are ending activity since they are ending activities they have to end on a same node so d e f are ending on a same node but here since a and b to start activity d and f a and b and b and c respectively should join on the same event same node so since there is no connection we are using dummies which are named as dummy 1 and dummy 2 so in this way we can have the rules that are followed uh, to draw an arrow diagram so this is our arrow diagram now we have to use folkerson's rule to number the events so this is our first event then this is our second event after this event we can start this and then this is our fourth event and this is our fifth event so this is how you need to draw arrow diagram by drawing activities on the arrow and then naming the events using folkerson's rule thank you for watching the video